All right, welcome back to Dell Maths Concepts. So what we're looking at today is um, some questions um, relating to the curriculum based test. So let us go. Let's go. Which name correctly represents the number 524? All right, so all we have to do is to read. Um, A says 542, that's incorrect. 500. 24, that's good. This one says 254, that's wrong. 424, that's wrong, right? So 524 is B. So with these questions, please read carefully as you go. Number two says, examine the Venn diagram below. Use it to answer item two. So we're looking at the Venn diagram, right? So it says, which student like both art and music. So when we're referring to um, Venn diagram, when we have intersecting sets where the set overlap, we refer to both, right? So in this case, we're talking about this section right here, right? So it's very simple to look and see what's going on here. That's J. So the question says, which student like both art and music? I guess it's J. All right, number, number three says five numbers are shown in the box below. The value of the digit two is less than 1,000 in each of the following in the box. Examine the numbers carefully, then answer item three. So you're seeing where it is less than 1,000. It's 200 there. It is 20 there. It's 20 here, 20 there. It's two there. So the value of two is less than a thousand in those. So let's look at the third question. It says, for which of the following is the value of the digit two also less than a thousand? So you wanna go through um, here at A, I'm getting 1,200. So if you just read the figure to yourself, you can hear it, 1,200. So that's less than a thousand, which means this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong. There is only one correct answer right there speak in terms of the words and listen to yourself and you will get the value. Question four says, in the number 81,509, the digit eight is in dash place. We're talking about the place value system. So in the place value system, uh, we have units, we call it ones, then we have tens, then there is, let me write the number, we have hundreds, and then we have thousands, and then after that we have tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands. So you're talking about eight here. So it is gonna be occupying this. So we have an eight, one, five, zero, nine. So you could see that eight is in the tens of thousands, right? So right here is in the 10 thousands. So if you remember your place value system, you could easily, Jot it down, put the numbers there, and make sure that you're not making any error. A student made the following statement. Use it to answer item five. It says, when multiplying a number by 10, simply put a zero at the end of the number. For example, 42 times 10 will give you 420. For which number? will this strategy work? So they're saying, which one of these numbers you could observe huh? that if you put a zero at the end, it means you're multiplying by 10. Be advised, this idea only works for whole numbers. This is not an old number, that's a decimal. This is not an old number, that's a decimal. This is not an old number, it's a decimal. This is an old number. So it will work. So if I'm multiplying seven times 10, then I could put a zero at the end of the seven, turn it into 70, right? It only works for whole numbers. Think about that. Number, two, number six says, which statement is an example of a finite set? What entails a finite set? A finite set is a set where you are not able to count, right? The number of elements or members in that set. So what we're going to do, we're going to be reading these to see which one of these we are not able 
to find the value for. For example, it, um, the first one says the set of numbers greater than 10. I think this is the answer right about now because um, the set of numbers greater than 10, I am not able to put a total to it because I could find numbers greater than 10 all the way to infinity and beyond. All right, so the answer is A. But let us just read through the other ones to see that, you know, what they are made of. It says the set of letters of, in the alphabet. We already know the, the total number of letters in the alphabet. So that's finite. The set of grains of rice in a cup. I could empty the cup and count them one by one. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. I am able to tell because the cup has a limit. Um, B says that the set of cars in a parking lot. The parking lot has so much space and no more. So all of those are incorrect. A is the answer. The set of numbers greater than 10. It's, a, it's an infinite set simply because we are not able to count and give a figure directly. Let's look at number seven. Which of the following ratios is equivalent to two thirds? All right. So we're talking about getting two, three, right? Two thirds right now. What you want to do is to quickly cancel. Employ canceling, right? So five can cancel here. Five into itself, one. Five into the ten, two. That is not the answer. Five into itself, one. Five into fifteen, three. This is still not the answer. Five into ten, that's two. Five into fifteen, that's three. And here is the answer. I'm seeing that. Like that. Let us just continue for this just to mark it off. Uh, five into ten, two. 5 into 25, 5. So this is not the answer. So you could see the answer is C, 10 to 15 is the same thing as 2 to 3. All right. All right. Number eight says, which problem can be solved by adding one half plus one third? So we're going to be looking at the various situations and see which one of these um, is actually forcing us to add a half plus a third. Let's read them. Jake put a half of his pencils in an empty cup. He then put another third of his pencils in the same cup. What fraction of his pencils are in the cup? Well, this is the answer because you're seeing where he puts a half plus he puts a third. So you could see us adding a half and a third. Let us just read the others so that we could ca cancel them off. Jake puts a half of his pencils in his desk. This is a good start. He then gives away. When you give away, you're subtracting. So this is a minus. So this one is incorrect. Let us look at the C. Jake gives a half of his pencils to Bill and some of his pencils to Kim. What fraction of his pencils did Kim have if he now has one third remaining. Nah, that's not adding either. Jake gives a half of his pencils to Jill and one third of the remainder to Bill. That is still not adding. What franchise does he have left? You're going to have to subtract. No. So A is the answer as we rightfully said. We were just going through these so that we could let you get a better understanding of what is not, right? All right, good. Let us go to question nine. Question nine actually says, the students in the class were uh, given the following grid and asked to comment on the portion of the grid that is shaded. Use the grid as well as the comments of four students made about it to answer question nine. All right, so which is item nine. All right, so we want to see what's going on here. So let us take a quick look, right? So taking a quick look, I might want to minimize this just a little bit so I can see. All right, good. All right, so, um, so what you want to do with a question like this is to have an idea of what portion of this is shaded right now. I need to know that. So in an effort to do that, I'm going to have to do a quick check let us check. We're talking about um, the length of this. So we're talking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm getting 10. 
um, the length, so we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, so this is a 10 by 10. All right, so a 10 by 10 would have given a total of 100. So we have 100 squares there, right? 10 by 10 would have meant that we have 100 squares. So let us check off to see how many was actually shaded. So the shaded portions, I'm going to use, uh, let me use a red marker to mark this off quickly. So we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six. So the shaded portion is a six times 10, and definitely that is going to be 60. So the shaded portion is 60, and the, the unshaded portion is 40. All right, so we know that the shaded portion is 60 out of 100 which is the same thing as 60% or as a decimal, 0 0.6 as a decimal, right? Or if you want to cancel down the 60 out of 100 by canceling off the zeros at the end, then 2 into the 6 is 3, 2 into the 10 is 5. So 3 fifth is also the same thing. When you look at these responses, Right now, the question says which student comment is incorrect. Now, Jody is correct because it's one six, and we are seeing where one six was there. Lisa said 60% of the grid is shaded. This is correct. We had that already. Uh, Mike says three fifths of the grid is shaded, and we realized that we'll get three fifths just the same. And this says six hundredth with a th, right? of the grid is shaded and that is incorrect it's not 600 is shaded right it is actually um 60 percent right is shaded all right good 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 all right let's look at this other question so it says here the diagram below represents the number 200 use it to answer item 10 what is 80 percent of the number there are two ways you could approach this quickly. Now, let us see how many boxes we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One of the ways to solve this is to understand that since we have 10 equal boxes to be added to give 200, we have... So if, if you do this, I'm just saying, if you do this, you'd realize that we have 20 in each. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. 20, 20, 20, 20. So 20 each. So we can do a number of things. We can say we can find 80% of the 10 boxes. And that is going to give us what? Let's cancel, cancel, cancel. It's going to give us eight boxes. So I could say I'm going to check up to eight. For example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we're checking this off, you could have said easily 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. So some of you might approach it like that. That's fine. That's fine. Another approach is to look at it and say, um, since the number is 200, I could have said 80% of 200 over one. And then 100 into itself one time, 100 into 200 two times. 80 times 2 will give me 160, just the same. So there are various ways to approach the problem. As long as you understand what you're doing, you can actually execute it in whichever way you want. Thank you for watching Delimat's content. Look out for the next video that is coming up. See you next time. Bye-bye.